Cristo from the church. Brother Srimsara as well as other Cambodian uh, missionaries now to come back here and start ministering to their own people. Shall we stand up please? We already read our text. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time that you have given us once again to study your word. Bless us, Lord, as we look a deeper, O oh God, into this uh, thing that we call worship, a very important thing because the Father is looking for such to worship him truthfully and worship him in spirit and in truth. I pray, Lord, that we will understand worship and we will employ the right kind of worship that is found, Lord, in your word. Help me, Lord, as I preach, because there is nothing in me that can help your people. But if the Holy Spirit will see it fit to use me, then, Lord, all of us will benefit from the study of your word today. Bless your people as they listen. May you be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. So today I prepared perhaps the shortest message that I will be preaching this month. So don't worry. It's not going to take long. But I am going to preach about worship. And what we're going to do today is sort of a word study. That we're going to look at the word worship in several areas where it was used in the Bible. And we will draw our definition on the biblical basis of worship. You see, there are much confusion about, about worship. We know that the Lord Jesus Christ mentioned in this text that there is what we call true worship and false worship true worship is a worship of people who are saved because only saved people can really worship god amen and saved people will not be able to worship god because there is no spirit spiritual link so that they can worship god in spirit and the word of god is foolishness unto a natural man so there is no truth whenever they try to worship. So whenever a pagan or an unbeliever tries to worship God, what they can come out is always a false kind of worship. There may be these elements of sincerity. There may be the element of uh, a uh, heart that is really uh, beating for what they perceive as their God. There may be this uh, element of sacrifice that's why some people are uh, even, even trying to wound themselves while worshiping. They're trying to walk on their knees and doing obeisance and all of these things. But as long as there is no spiritual link and truth uh, link in that worship, then that worship is a false worship. Amen. Because only the people of God, only those with right relationship with the Lord can worship God in spirit and in truth. In the verses that we have read, we all know the story of the Samaritan woman. We know the uh, prophetic utterance of the Lord Jesus Christ regarding her life that God knew even though uh, she uh, did not give that information to the Lord. Our, our Lord is an all-knowing God. We know that there is no dealing with the Samaritan and the Jews. That is why when the Lord Jesus Christ was here, they concentrated their ministry to the Jews. The disciples were not even allowed to go to the ways of the Gentiles because they need to preach the kingdom of God. But in rare occasions, the Lord Jesus Christ will come out of his way and go to places wherein he was not actually sent. He said that I was, that I was sent to the house of Israel, but in this particular time, he went and needs must go through Samaria in order to talk to this Samaritan woman. So even though they are dealing with the Jews, there are also Samaritans and Gentiles who are getting saved in that process as the Lord Jesus Christ preached the word of God. And then they talk about water, natural water and the living water. If you take natural water, you will thirst again. But if you, you will take up the living water, you will never thirst again. And that pertains to eternal life. If you have eternal life, then you will never thirst, you will never hunger, because you have everything in your life. Amen. So that is what eternal life can do to you. And then later on, they talk about worship. Because the Samaritans worship in that place by virtue of their father, Jacob. But the Lord Jesus, but according to that lady, because you are a prophet, you said that 
people should worship in Jerusalem because it is where God will set up his kingdom. But then the Lord Jesus Christ corrected her and uttered a prophetic message that now is the time that people should not worship here or in Jerusalem, but people can worship anywhere and they should worship God in spirit and in truth. And the Father is looking for such a worship. Amen. So that is the worship that the Lord Jesus Christ is talking about. Now, question. Can we worship God wherever we are? Can we worship God even though we are not in the church? But can we worship God without going to the church? So these are the things that we are going to answer as we look at the word worship and how they were used in the Bible. Let us begin in Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 4. Genesis 22, 1 to 4. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Let us read verse number 5 as, as, uh, before I go into some details. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with us, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. So we can see here that the first time the word worship was used was in connection with Abraham being asked by God to offer his son Isaac. And as Abraham prepared to go to the a mountain where God asked him to go to offer his son, he said in verse number 5 that I am going there in order to worship God. So by this we can see that the Bible defines worship the first time as a willingness to obey God no matter how one's faith is tested. So it is your willingness to obey God. If there is willingness in your heart to obey God, even though it will inconvenience you, even though if it will make you uncomfortable, even though if it will ask you to give up the most important person or thing in your life and you persist in obeying God, that is worship. So when we obey God, we are worshiping God. When we sacrifice for God, we are worshiping God. When we allow God to take the most important things in our lives and offer them willingly to God, that is what we call worship. And that is how Abraham worshiped the Lord. He was willing to let go of Isaac, the promise of God, that God will use to make him the father of many nations but for Abraham it doesn't matter what's important is my worship to God and I will obey him no matter what amen so when there is something that you're not willing to do for God then you're not worshiping him but there is something that you're not willing to turn your back for God then you are not actually worshiping God so because the father requested him or commanded him to give up his son and he obeyed, the Bible called it worship. You see, we can also see that in this particular event, we can also see the willingness of Isaac to give his life up at the command of the father. You see, Abraham here was old. Isaac was young. And when Isaac saw that there is something that is not normal. That his father is going to sacrifice something, but there is nothing there, but only him. So it must have come into his mind that he will be the object of that sacrifice. And because he was young, he can easily run away from Abraham. And Abraham won't be able to go after him. He can easily overpower Abraham. Because if you are there to worship, 
Why is it that Abraham is going to tie him with a rope? So there is something that is going on that is not according to how they know to worship God. So he can easily do that, but then again, worship suggests that if we are willing to offer our lives to God without any hesitation, then we worship God. Amen? According to Romans 12, 1 and 2, what did it say? Uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. What does it signify? If it is a living sacrifice, it means you are doing it willingly. Because a dead sacrifice cannot do anything. When we offer animals, they are dead. When we offer things, they are inanimate objects. They cannot do anything. They cannot say otherwise. They cannot protest. And they cannot even uh, uh, not allow themselves to be sacrificed. But when we say living sacrifice, it means there is volition, there is willingness, there is willfulness that our lives will be offered to God. So when Isaac allowed his father to offer him, then Isaac is worshiping the Lord. Amen. So we can say that the first definition of worship is a willingness to obey God, no matter what, and a willingness to offer our lives willingly in service of God. That is worship. So whenever we said that we are worshiping God and becoming disobedient, we're not worshiping God. It is a false worship. Whenever we are withholding something that we knew God is requiring from us, we are not worshiping God. That is false worship. And whenever we receive some, reserve something for ourselves, then we're not worshiping God. Worshiping God, we are worshiping ourselves. So that is the first definition of worship. So we can confirm here that worship is synonymous to serving God. Look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. It is synonymous to serving God. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 10. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So when you serve God, it is synonymous to worshiping God. So there is no person who can say that he's worshiping God if that person is not serving the Lord. So you ask yourself today, what is your area of service to God? Because if you're not serving God, then you're not worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Why? Because God will not save a person and let that person sit down until death or until the coming of the Lord, Jesus Christ. We are saved to serve. And that is one a form of worship that we can do with God. And then, uh, going on, years later, in Genesis chapter 24, we're not going to read this, but... In Genesis 24, verses 1 to 11, there is this account that Abraham sent his servant to his homeland to find a bride for Isaac. That is the custom during that time. It's not the, 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 the son who will find a wife for himself. It is the job of the father to find a wife for the son. But thank God it is not uh, the way right now because it will take a lot of time, a lot of effort, and of course, a lot of money because if you are going to choose, there is a, what you call a dowry that is a, a included in that. So he sent the servant to find a wife for Isaac. In verses 12 to 14, when he received it, meaning to say, the, uh, uh, the finding of the wife, I received the command, and in verses 15 to 25, it says, He worshipped the Lord by thanking Him because God allowed him to find a woman for Isaac. That's why we're going to look at chapter 14, verses 26 to 27. Genesis chapter 24, 26 to 27. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. 
27, and he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth, I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. So you can see, if you will follow the account, it was God who led him to find the wife to be of Isaac in the house of the, the relatives of Abraham. So when the Lord led him into that place and saw the woman that would be the wife of Isaac, he thanked God and worshipped the Lord. So in the Bible, it says that whenever we thank God, we are worshipping God. Whenever we say, thank you Lord, because you answered my prayer, then you are worshipping the Lord. God gave you a job, you thank Him, you're worshipping God. God gave you what you're requesting for, He gave it, you thank God, you're worshipping God. Every thankfulness, every gratitude that we show to the Lord is a way of worshipping God. That is why a Christian must always be thankful. That's why we must have a grateful disposition to the Lord. Why? Because every day we need to thank God for all things work together for good because we love the Lord. Amen? So that is why there must always be thankfulness and as we thank God, listen, we are worshiping God. That is why you can worship God anywhere. Because you can thank God at school. You can thank God in your home. You can thank God in the marketplace. You can thank God while you, while you are traveling. You can thank God while you are driving. Wherever you are, you can always thank God. And according to the Bible, thanking God because of answered prayer is a form of worshiping the Lord. So thank God whenever He answered our prayer. Amen? And then many years after that, in Exodus chapter 4, verse 31, we can see that the Israelites acknowledged that God honored this promise to redeem them from Egypt. So this will lead us to believe that it is a form of worship when we acknowledge God in everything that is happening in our lives. Amen. You see, God promises something, and when that something happens, then we thank God, honor God, that is worshiping God. Like for example, he said that he will give us good health. While we have that good health, let us thank God. Because it is a, uh, a uh, fulfillment of God's promise to you and to me. You see, Israel has been a bandage in Egypt for many, many years, almost 400 years. But in spite of that, one day they saw that God is answering their prayer. And when God answered their prayer, they bowed their heads thank him and the bible says that in that way they were able to worship god do you know why because all things work together for good no matter what happened you can worship god no matter what happened you can honor god no matter what happened you can always thank god or we can always thank god because there is no accident in the life of every child of god whatever what happens it is god's plan for us and we have to acknowledge that and thank God. The Bible says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. So there is worship whenever we acknowledge God. Not only that, in Deuteronomy 26.10, can we go there please? Yoko na sanang isama to eh, baka ma-pick up na mali eh. And now behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land. <laughs> which thou, O Lord, hast given me, and thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God, and worship before the Lord thy God. So we can see in the Bible that whenever you bring your first fruits, if you're an Israelite, you are worshiping God. But in our time, whenever you put God first in your life, you are worshiping God. That's why God must always be first in our love. He must always be first in our service. He must always be first every day. He must be, He must occupy the paramount place in our lives. 
Whenever we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then we are worshiping God. So putting God first is a form of worship. So when you love your husband more than God, that is a false worship. When you love your parents more than God, that is a false worship. When you love money more than God, it is a false worship. But whenever we put God first in anything and everything, then we are worshiping God. Amen. That is why whenever there is something that we receive or see in our lives, let us always put God first, not second, not third, not even last. He must always occupy first place in our lives. Amen. So that is a form of worship. And then in uh, the book of Judges chapter 7, let us look at verses 9 to 14. Judges chapter 7, 9 to 14, and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. So the Lord is talking to Gideon, and the Lord is giving Gideon an assurance that they're going to have victory in this almost impossible battle because they are severely outnumbered. But even though you are a minority, if you have God on your side, you will always win any kind of battle. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Fura, thy servant, down to the host. And thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down with Fura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. Ganon karami. Parang mga tipaklong sa sobrang dami. And their camels were without number as the sand by the sea side for multitude. 300 versus this multitude that they are going to face in their in this particular battle. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. Parang ito yung kanta ni ano, no? And lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the hose of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand God delivered Midian and all the hosts. So we can see here that Gideon worshipped God because of the assurance that was given to him of a victory. So similarly, when we thank God today for all the assurances that we find in the word of God, then that is a kind of worship. Amen. Whenever you see that we are assured of salvation and we thank God, then we worship the Lord. Whenever we see that God will supply all of our needs and we believe it and claim it for our lives, then we worship the Lord. Listen, whenever we believe the word of God, we are worshiping Him. Because without the word of God, it will make it impossible to worship God because He must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. And this is the only absolute truth that we have in this word. Amen. So, by believing God's word and His promises, then we are actually worshiping God. And then in Job chapter 1 verse 20, please. Job 1.20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. This is one of the hardest time to worship God. This is one time where many people will snap and break and turn their backs on the Lord. We know what happened to Job. In only one day, Everything was taken away from him. The properties, the servants, the children, 
All that was left was a nagging wife, and then he was given this particular a disease or sickness that will make it very hard for him to act normally. Everything was taken away from Job. All that he has uh, worked for all of his life was taken away from him in spite, despite that he was a just man. Despite that the Bible says he was a perfect man. Despite that the Bible says that he is should evil. If there is a person that do not deserve all these unfortunate incidents in life, it should be Job. Why? Because of his faithfulness in the Lord. But you see, even all of these things happen in his life. The Bible says that Job rent his mantle and shaved his head because of shame and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. My, who can worship God in this condition? Sometimes we're only sick and we cannot worship God. When we lose a family member, we ask God why. When we lose our job, we ask God why. When there is something that we do not like that is happening in our lives, we always question God, why? Lord, why me? Why are you doing this to me? Lord, I am serving you. I'm doing everything that you want me to do. I am faithful. I pray every day. I read the Bible. I attend church. I give. I do everything, oh God. Why? But in the life of Job, no. He said, the Lord give it. The Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It doesn't matter. He worshiped God. So worshiping God is only in times, of, not only in good times. But worshiping God must also be in bad times. Worshiping God is not only on top of the mountain, but even at the lowest part of the valley. Worshiping God is not only during the day, but worshiping God is also during the night. Worshiping God is not only when there is a smile on our faces, but we must worship God even though tears are flowing from our eyes. Why? Because the highest occupation of a child of God is to worship God whatever the situation is. Amen? I believe that this is one of the highest worship that a human can offer to God. Here we find another meaning of worship. It is a firm resolve to maintain one's integrity in worshiping God. Resolve, Lord, I'm going to worship you no matter what happens. Bless me, I'll worship you. Curse me, I'll worship you. Give me, I will worship you. Take it away from me, I will worship you no matter what. I have this firm resolve that I am going to worship you. Look at chapter 2, verse 9. Chapter 2, verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. You see, I believe his wife loved him so much. Do you believe that? I believe that. Because they're married. They, they, they had a good time. They had a good life. They had children. They had properties. They had almost everything that a man can ask for. But then all of a sudden he saw all the suffering that Job is going through. And then maybe she could not bear it anymore. And she just told Job, do not retain your integrity. Just curse God and let this all be done with. Just end your life. Because there seem to be no let up in what is happening to you. Only that can give you comfort. So you curse God and you die. And you know what Job says? You are a foolish woman. The Lord gives. The Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. May just lang tayo pag may blessing. Pag walang blessing, wala na tayong Diyos. Kaya ang Diyos natin, yung blessing. Hindi ang Diyos. 
We only worship God when we are well. But when we are sick, we question God. We worship God when we are wealthy. But when we are in poverty, we question God. We worship God when He supplies all of our needs and all things are working clearly uh, together for good. But when it seems bad, we, we, uh, we question God. When we are in the daylight, we worship God. But then darkness will fall and we question God. Ladies and gentlemen, worshiping God is not controlled by circumstances, but worshiping God will control our circumstances. Amen? It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter where. It doesn't matter why. All we have to do is to worship God. 2 Samuel 12, 18 to 20. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servant of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? We know the story, right? Because of his uh, adulterous relationship with Bathsheba. But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Imagine how devastating is this for a parent. Imagine hearing that your child just died. Imagine God taking something very precious from you away from you and the child died and David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshipped the first thing that we do is we mourn the first thing that we do is we cry the first thing that we do in this instance is to panic. The first thing that we do is to, to blame people, to blame God, to blame ourselves, to find a reason why a child will die. But in the case of David, no. When his child died, he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Why? Because David knew that God knows what he's doing. Because David knew that he can trust God. Because David knew that God will not allow anything to happen in his life that will not work together for his good. So even if the child was taken, even if the a kingdom was taken, even if his health was taken, even if he became a fugitive, even though his son rebelled and revolted against him, no matter what happened, David can still worship God. This is worship. So let us ask ourselves. A while ago, we can say that yes, we are really worshiping God. Because of the blessing. Because of the promises. Because of you know, all the, th the good things that God is doing to us. But how about now? What if your husband will leave you? Can you worship God? What if your parents will turn their backs on you will you worship God what if you have to give up the most important thing or person in your life can you still worship God because this is worship according to the Bible it is not just going to the church sitting down singing, reading the Bible, listening, praying that is not the only kind of worship that God is requiring from us because God is requiring a worship in spirit and in truth, truth being the word of God, spirit having a relationship with him, and knowing that we have a relationship with God, and God is faithful no matter what happened, it will always reflect the faithfulness of God in our lives. David worshiped God. And ladies and gentlemen, in times like this, we can show a very powerful testimony of worshiping God. So that the unbelievers will see that there is something that we have that they do not have. 
Sabi ng mga ano, buhay pa anak niya, hindi man natin makausap, di nakikinig sa atin. Paano ngayon numatay na? Ano sasabihin natin? Ano na mangyayari sa kanya? Pag nasabi natin na matay na yung anak niya, sabi niyo, ba't nagbubulungan itong mga to? Patay na ba yung bata? Opo, patay na ho. Nag-ayos siya. Ito, mabu- bumangon, nag-ayos, naligo, nag-ahit, at pumunta sa tahanan ng Diyos at sinamba ang Panginoong Diyos at kumain na siya. Parang everything went back to normal. Why? Because God has already done. is already done in one part of His life and He will move on to another phase of His life. Amen? Hindi na siya iiyak over spilled milk. Well, alam niya kasalanan niya, alam niya nagkamali siya eh. Pero God is gracious. Nakinuwa yung bata, dinala sa langit at sabi niya isang araw, makakasama ko siya. Malay mo kung nabuhay ito, matindi pa ito kay Absalom. We do not know. But David knew that whatever happened, he is going to worship God. And once the sermon saw this, I believe, they said that there is another spirit in King David because he can accept everything if it is according to the will of God. So we must have, ladies and gentlemen, a worshipful life. Another form of worship we can see in Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. This is the kind of worship that is mostly preached in our pulpits today. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with his with Mary his mother and fell down and worship. So who are these? These are the Magi <laughs> and the three kings. <laughs> the three kings. No, these are the Magi, the wise men from the east. So they fell down and worship him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and mere. Listen, contributing or giving to the cause of God is a form of worshiping Him. Amen? You see, whenever we worship God, we must offer Him something. There must be finances involved or things involved. In the Old Testament, whenever they go to, they go to the temple, they will either bring their tithes in kind they will bring their first fruits. They will bring something to give to the Lord as they worship God. The same thing with us. Whenever we worship God, we must give something to Him. So financial giving is a part of worshiping the Lord. But sad to say, this is the most a topic preached in most of our pulpit because it involves money. But it is only one form of worship. It is not all that is in worship. Because you can hear people that if you do not give, then you're not worshiping God. You know, sometimes you, there is nothing to give. Sometimes you are in a dire strait and you really cannot give anything to the Lord. But God knows the attitude of our hearts. So therefore, some people, if they cannot give anything to God, they will not even come to church because they will be charged of not worshiping the Lord. You see, when you have given your life, then there is nothing that you cannot give to God. So, continue worshiping the Lord. But this suggests that giving in the ministry is a part of worshiping God. Look at Philippians 2, 25 to 27, please. Philippians 2, 25 to 27. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger, and that he ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that he heard him that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Listen. As I have said a while ago, and I will reiterate it again, that it seems very hard to worship God when we are in this condition. When we are sick, when we are poor, when we are in poverty, when we are in a hard place, when we are in the midst of a crisis, when we have a lot of problems in our hearts. But ladies and gentlemen, the highest form of worship usually happens when we are on the negative side of the scale. Di ba may awit, tila kay daling pasalamatan ng Diyos dahil sa mga pagpapalang lagi niyang kaloob. 
Madali. Even in our lives, if, if, if parents will give everything that their children needs, then the children can love the parents. But when the parents started to withhold something that children may not understand, but for their good, they might have a different mindset regarding their parents. But they do not understand that the parents are only doing things that will protect their children. And the same thing with God. When there is an unanswered prayer, there is a better answer that God will give later on. So even in an answered prayer, we need to worship God. Amen? You see, sometimes it is very hard to worship God. Sometimes we may not feel that we want to worship God because of the things that are happening to us. But ladies and gentlemen, even if God will not listen to us, listen, even if God will not listen to us, even if God will not incline this ear, it will always glorify God when we worship Him. Let us look at this account and we will end this up. Part, Matthew 15, 21 until 28. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Yung anak niya, possessed ng diablo. But he answered her not a word. Dinedma ng Panginoon. Lord of mercy! My daughter is possessed of the devil! But the Lord Jesus Christ did not even answer her. Dinedma siya ng Panginoon. Na, 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 naranasan niyo ba yung dinedma kayo? Ano mararamdaman niyo? Di ba masakit? At minsan na reaction mo, ha? Tsura mo. Ay, di ba? Iwan mo na. Kasi dinit mo ka, hindi ka pinansin, nagsalita ka. But he answered her, not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away! For she cried after us, not only that God, that Jesus did not answer her word, but the disciples came and tried to send her away. Hoy! Huwag ka may nga ilayas! Inaisturbo mo ang Panginoon. You are not even a part of his ministry. Go! He was sent away. But he answered and said, I am not sent. This, this, now, the Lord Jesus Christ answered when he was being sent away. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You are not my business, woman. My business is the house of Israel. That's why I did not answer you. I did not come for you. I came. For Israel. 25. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Despite of that, dined ma siya. Pinalaya siya. Sinabi ang wala akong pakialam sa'yo. Ano ginawa niya? She worshipped him. Amen? She worshipped him. Even though God has nothing to do with her, she worshiped him. And they know the result. Look at 26. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Ano zong? Ininsulto pa siya. Sabi niya, hindi tamang pakain ko sa iyo ang pagkain para sa mga anak. Aso ka eh. Hindi to para sa iyo. Sa mga anak to. Tinan mo sa kanya. And she said, Truth, Lord. Tinanggap niya, aso siya. Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. But Lord, yes, you feed your children, but surely there will be crumbs. And I will be contented with that. And then, then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, Great is thy faith. O oh, woman, great is thy faith. She was a Gentile. She was not supposed to believe in Jesus. 
She was not the reason in the first place why the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world. She was a dog. She was unclean. The Lord has nothing to do or the Jews has nothing to do with them. But after she showed this great faith, the Lord then Jesus answers and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it said unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. You see, God cannot resist or neglect true worship. And He will accept it from whomever it will come if it is according to the truth. And there is that spirit of worshiping God. You see, sometimes the Lord may seem so far away. Sometimes the Lord may not seem uh, listening to our plea. But it should not stop us from worshiping Him. We must continue worshiping God. Amen? Amen. So number one, a worshipful life. Number two, a worshipful church. A worshipful church church. While we have looked at several ways to worship the Lord, we also need to ask ourselves if our church service at IBCSR is characterized by worship. Because you see, it does not mean that you go to a church that you are actually worshiping God. It does not mean that because you are here or in a gathering of God's people, that you are actually worshiping God. So there must be some characteristic that must be present in order that we can say that we are worshiping God. You see? So if we were asked the question, are you worshiping God in your worship service at IBCSR? My answer is yes. We're worshiping God. Yes, we're worshiping God. Pastor, how can you be so sure? Well, Look at this. Look at Joshua chapter 5, verse number 14. And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, I am now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth. And he did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? D did you notice the question of Joshua when he worshiped? He said, what said my Lord? The most important element in worshiping God or true worship is the preaching of God's word. In there are places they worship God because there are statues. In some places they worship God because there is much emotion. In some places they worship God because there is a, a concert of what they call Christian songs. In some places, they go and they say that they worship God because they have great fellowship. But ladies and gentlemen, here at IBCSR, we worship God because we listen to the Word of God. And that is the most important element in our worship. That there is preaching in this church. That there is teaching of God's Word in this church. And in this church, Praise God, the word of God is being rightly divided and that is important to God. How can we worship Him in truth if the truth is not being preached in a church? That is why I can say that we are worshiping God. Because in our church, we preach the word of God by the grace of God, rightly divided. And in our church, the servants of God listen to the word of God. So we can say that we are worshiping God. Look at Matthew chapter 15 verse 9. This is the wrong kind of worship. And it was actually uh, disapproved by God. Matthew 15 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. We do not teach here the commandments of men for doctrine. We only teach the commandments of God. We only teach the word of God. Because when we teach the commandments of men, we worship in vain. We do not teach something that is not according to the word of God, rightly divided. We do not preach 
that Christian must give their first fruits because only Israel must give their first fruits in the Old Testament. We do not preach that we worship on Sabbath day because Sabbath was only given to Israel and we worship God every Sunday or first day of the week. We do not ask people to give that is not uh, according to the Word of God. Why? Because giving to the Word of God must be done cheerfully, willingly, with generosity, and according to the Word of God. We do not invent doctrine, and we do not teach the commandments of men. We only preach the Word of God, the pure, unadulterated Word of God. That is why we can say, here at IBCSR, we are worshiping God. Because what we teach and what we emphasize is the Word of God. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, 37. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, teka muna, unknown talaga sa akin yan, 27, 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or a spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandment of the Lord. You see, that is what we emphasize. That is why you need to be a Berean. After you hear the Word of God, once you get home, you open your Bible and see if what we preach to you is really according to the Word of God so that you will not be deceived and follow something that is not according to the will of God. You see, that is what we preach here. We do not invent doctrine. We do not have any white Christmas offering. Why there is no snow here in Cambodia? We do not have a happy birthday Jesus offering on December 25. Why we do not know? And we are sure that he was not born on that day. We do not have a, uh, all the kinds of offering that people are asking from their people. We only emphasize the word of God. 1 Thessalonians 4.2 For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. You see, everything that we say in this church must be according to the word of God that he gave through his apostles. Because we need to do the apostles' doctrine. Obey the apostles' doctrine in our lives, proving that we are really the children of God. You see, when you don't feel like worshiping at your church, or maybe you feel that we are not really worshiping God, listen, if you hear the word of God, preach according to the word of God, or according to the truth, then be assured that you are worshiping God and you continue attending service because as a believer, it is more pleasing to him to attend services where the word of God is being preached than services where shallow emotionalism is happening. Nakita niyo yung pinost na ano? Ni sino ba nagpost nun? Si Pastor Jesse ba? Yung sa church, Baptist daw yata yung church na yun. Di ba may kumakanta ng special number? Itong isa, pumuporma na eh. Kakakantante, biglang nung pagdating sa chorus, tumakbo! Talagang tumakbo siya! Tapos may naglundag, may pumunta sa baptistry, pumunta rito, nag-tumbling! Tapos tumaloy siya rin sa baptistry, nalunag yata, hindi na nakita pagkatapos nun. Emotionalism! Lundagan sila, takbuhan sila! Meron church ako na atinan sa America Black Church. While the pastor is preaching, the people started running around the church. And I do not know what to do. I said, is there a fire? Is the church burning? Are they running after a thief or what? What's happening? They're running. They're, they're doing like this. They're shouting. They're jumping. And it was a Baptist church. I said, my, what have I gotten myself into? Why are these people doing this? And they preach from 9 a.m. until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. 
And I was there sitting and telling myself, Lord, come quickly. I won't be able to bear what is happening here. But then all of a sudden, the climate changes when they said, before we go, we will take a special offering for the ministry, for the missionary. And that was the first time that there was a smile on my face. And they took, and they passed the offering plate, and they gave me cash, this stick. And while I am on the car, I said, I will count it. And it is $86, all one (laughs) dollar. And then there was, again, no more smile on my face. Emotionalism. And that is what is happening in our time today. There are so many emerging churches, and because we are not doing anything against it, they continue to emerge. Have you seen the latest uh, concert of Hillsong Circus? A cowboy with that is a bear, naked, no cloth, and all of these things. It's now happening in the churches. Disco like music and lights are being worldly songs being performed inside the church. You see, very sad that we have people who before attended our church. And they post that they are singing worldly songs, I believe, inside the church. With almost no light and they are on the spotlight. And they said that they're worshiping God. You're not worshiping God. You're worshiping the devil. Because you are not preaching and emphasizing the truth of the word. But listen, if there will be no music in our church, then fine, as long as we have the word of God. I'm not saying that we should not have any music, but even if we do not have anything else in this church, as long as we have the word of God, then we are worshiping God in this church. So that is why we will keep on emphasizing, we will keep on doing, and we will keep on worshiping God. Look at John chapter 9, 35 to 38. Jesus heard that they had cast him out and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. What did he believe? He believed on the Lord Jesus Christ because of the word of Jesus. So that is what we have in this church. That's why we can say that we are worshiping God. Amen? Amen. And then lastly, number three, future worship. Future worship. So finally, once we draw our last breath and enter into the presence of God, then we are going to worship God forever and forever without end. Amen. Amen. Pastor, nabobor ako sa worship. Huwag kang pupunta sa langit. Because what we are going to do in heaven is just worship God. And if you are bored in any worship service, then you will be bored eternally. There. In heaven. Amen. Because we are going to worship Him every time. Are we going to worship Him day and night, Pastor? No. Because there is no day and there is no night there. Because Jesus is the light of that place. And we will see that time that the greatest and highest honor that we can have and the deepest privilege is to worship Him. That day, because finally, listen, we can worship Him face to face. Amen? Ngayon, iba eh. Pero mo nagwa-worship tayo, itong mukhang ito nakikita nyo. Ano? Wa-worship ko yan sa ibang simbahan, yung mukha ng pastor nakikita nyo na nagpipreach. 
May bisita tayo, yung mukha niya nakikita nyo. Sa conference natin, mukha ni Pastor Jesse makikita nyo. Huwag nyo i-translate yan. Puro mukha, mukha ng mga tao nakikita natin. But we are worshiping God. Pero time will come. We will worship Him face to face. Yung mukha niya makikita natin at doon tayo tunay na mamamangha. At gano'ng katagal natin siyang sasambahin? Magpakailan? Kailan pa man? Let us end with Psalms 19 verse 9 and Revelation 16. Sa Psalms muna, 99. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Revelation 16:7. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Psalms 19:2. No, Revelation 19:2, I'm sorry. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Pastor, what are you trying to drive at? Why are you saying all of these things with regards to worship? Okay, let me bring you the point. Look at Isaiah 66, 22 to 23. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. The reason why I said this is because we will continue to worship and Serve the Lord no matter what. So what are those conditions, Pastor, that, you know, why do we have to do all of these things in our lives? Because if we will continue to read, we will see that in heaven, before we get to heaven, we know that we have relatives that are in hell. We know we have loved ones that are in hell. We know that there are things that we did not do that we're supposed to do that resulted in those people that we love languishing over there in hell. And how can a true saved person enjoy heaven if in their mind they know that we have loved ones that are in hell? You see, when we get to heaven, God will change our body. God will change our mind. And all of these things will be removed so that we can continually worship God because in the light of all the verses that we have read, even if our relatives and loved ones are in hell, we know that it is God's rightful judgment. And in spite of all of these things, we will still continue to worship God forever and forever. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, let us worship Him. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. Let us worship Him in good days. Let us worship Him in bad days. Let us worship Him truthfully, listen, listening to the Word of God. And time will come, we will worship Him face to face. And no matter what may happen, even if our loved ones will not be able to make it, let us worship Him continually. But as I end, until we have time, until it is not yet our future worship that is happening, let us do our best so that we can reach our loved ones into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Worship. Shall we stand up? Every head's bowed, please.